Hi, welcome to the part 8 of this video series. We are looking at some of the real exam questions for AWS Solution Architect Certification Exam. Please subscribe to my channel. For questions 1 to 45, please refer parts 1 through 7 of this video series. Let's jump into question number 46. Please pause the video here if you want to read the question at leisure. So you have a Microsoft SharePoint deployment which is running on premises that requires a Windows 5 storage. This is a shared storage. The company wants to migrate the workload to AWS Cloud and this solution should be integrated with Active Directory for access control. So this setup on the left hand side, you have to move it to the right hand side which is on AWS Cloud with Active Directory integrated. So let's cancel the options. Option A, EFS works with Linux, not with Windows platform. If you see this question, it clearly says here Windows. So A is wrong. Let's see option B. SMB file works very well with Windows. That's good. But AWS storage gateway is the culprit here. Why? If you read this question, it clearly says migrate the workload. It doesn't say hybrid environment. When is storage gateway useful? When you have a data center as well as cloud and you're not doing a one-time migration but you're keeping it integrated for any future deployments to cloud but that is not the requirement here since the question clearly says migrate the workload hence option b is wrong option c it says to use s3 bucket as a mount which is wrong it cannot be used as a mount that leads us with option d if efs is for linux fsx is for high performance windows platform and then it, it also mentions to set the Active Directory domain for authentication, which serves our purpose and hence option D is the right answer. We will lock this answer and move forward. Let's look at question number 47. So here's the question. You may pause this video to read it carefully. So it says there is a NoSQL database cluster on EC2 instance. You are migrating to this EC2 instance. Okay. And it is creating three copies of data. And it also says the high IO throughput of the servers is of highest priority. So this question is all about using an instance type. So you have a NoSQL database and you are putting this database on EC2 instances. And when you are doing that, it is creating three copies of this database. So common sense says when you are creating three copies, you are making use of storage. You are not making use of compute. You are not making use of memory. I repeat it, when you're making a database, you're making three copies of the database, you are using storage because the same data, you are going to store it three times. So it will utilize your storage. It is not going to utilize your compute memory. With that justification, A should be the right answer because it is a storage optimized instance. This question, the problem it explains is all about storage and hence A is right. But let us also investigate options B, C, and D. Burstable GP instance. What it means is, as the name suggests, burstable. That means the load is not consistent. It sometimes bursts, it peaks, and sometimes it's pretty low. So it's not a consistent load. Does the quotient explain any such scenarios? No. It is only talking about three copies of the data. Hence, B is wrong. But what are those scenarios in which you can use burstable instances? Take the example of Uber. Sometimes during the day, the bookings are not consistent. If you see when it was not a COVID time at evening six o'clock, if you try to book Uber due to the high demands, you do not get the cab or the cabs are too expensive because that there is unexpected load on the database in the servers. It's, it's, that's why putting a burstable instance would be very lucrative for that scenario. But not good here. As a thumb rule, always remember, when you talk about memory, it is something to do with the analytics application. Analytics application, which is making use of memory because it stores data in your memory so that the performance of the analytics applications is great. Take the example of Tableau. If you're using Tableau on a database, Tableau makes use of a lot of memory optimized services. 
and if you are putting these on the databases then uh, memory optimized instances will definitely help you with that take an example of no sql databases like cassandra putting it on a memory optimized instance will improve the performance of that no sql database in this question there is no mention of the analytics application or any such problem statement hence c is wrong compute optimized instances are very helpful if you are running batch processing suppose if you have a variety of etl jobs and the entire window takes 4 hours if you give them compute optimized instances it will work very well because the entire compute will be available at its disposal okay but in this problem if you see there is no mention of any such batch processing it is just talking about creating three copies of data which is totally linked with storage and hence d is wrong so we will lock this answer and move forward let's see question 48 a company is planning to deploy rds database instance running on aurora and the backup retention policy requirement is of 90 days so we need to recommend a solution now there are four solutions mentioned here so let's scan through one by one so what it says is when you are creating the rds instance you set the backup retention period to 90 days that is fine there are options to set this up but this option doesn't talk about how exactly the backup would be taken either in the form of snapshots or some backup jobs it doesn't explain that so this is half the solution and hence it is not appropriate so a is wrong so b is talking about snapshots and what it says is you create automated snapshots that seems to be fine but then it is saying to save these in user managed s3 buckets we all know that s3 buckets you can set a life cycle policy and that life cycle policy is majorly about moving from hot to cold to deep cold or deep archive so since it is talking about moving to a user managed bucket i'm not very comfortable with this but let's park this option as of now because uh, let us see the other two options and then see if relatively this option is correct though uh, you you can do this but let's see if this option is uh, there are better options now what this option says is you create a backup plan and you perform a daily snapshot of the rdbs or sorry rds database with retention set to 90 days till here um, it it almost seems okay but you know what this will not work for rds it will work for efs uh, stores so in this case uh, what it seems is the retention period setting will work but you know in the background what it also does is it puts the uh, backup into the cold storage and the cold storage backup can only be put for uh, efs and not for rds so but in this case since it is not mentioning that there will be a cold storage transition and this option looks correct and you can create backup jobs to schedule the execution of the backup plan daily and daily a snapshot will be taken and you can set the retention period to 90 days which looks perfectly okay so even if you see this you can set the life cycle for the backup is transition to the cold storage okay so this will not work for uh, the other rds and those kind of stuff that, that is what our question says or it will not work for aurora dynamo db etc but it will work for the efs file system backups so what it means is we will use the expire after days setting to 90 days and this should work and the question is not talking about anything about transition to cold after days hence this option looks correct let's see option d so this is talking about using cloudwatch events which is perfectly not okay nobody use events to schedule backups so another thing it is telling is you execute lambda function to make a copy of rds automated snapshot now you should remember that lambda function expires in 10 to 15 minutes so if your backup is taking more than that time then your lambda will expire or it will autocomplete itself so in the event if your database is very big you will never be able to complete the backup operation and hence option d is wrong so in this case we should go with option c this looks relatively correct based on our analysis
and let's move forward to the next question so let's move to question number 49 so this is a question you may pause this video if you need to re read this at leisure so for me these are the keywords we have an rds mysql database which is on a multi az db instance it experiences highly dynamic reads that means we are not sure sometimes the reads are very high sometimes the read is okay okay so what's happening is the application developers they are noticing a significant slowdown when testing the read performance from a secondary aws take this example you have this rds az's in usa and you are accessing this from another country maybe france okay and this is your secondary aws region and if that is your secondary region and you are facing latency issues here the reads are not performing good so the developers want a solution that provides less than one second of read replication latency less than one second of read replication so the reads replication that's happening across within a second the databases should have the same data so these are the options and let's see which options looks good so the first one says install mysql on ec2 instance in the secondary region that means this is a secondary region and they are saying that you create a ec2 instance and create a database here but that will not solve the problem because you know again there will be latency issues again there can be replication issues between this region and this region so this option doesn't look correct let's look at option b here it says migrate the database to aurora with cross region replicas so there is a property of cross region replicas in aurora so what this feature does is it will create a read replica here so that the users in france can access it without much of a latency and without replication issues as well because aurora takes care of the cross region replicas hence this option looks perfect let's see option c option c suggests to create mysql read replica in the secondary region it is same as option a it will not help you because it is saying to create a read replica but what will help you is migrate the database using cross region replication that is the property of aurora so if you use that then you will get this one second read replication latency if you use option c you will not get one second read replication latency so c is wrong and d says use elastic cache to improve database query performance so d will not work here because when will d work is if you have reports suppose power bi reports running on this rds or aurora instance and if there are issues the report is running slow then you can put a cache there elastic cache there but here there are no requirements here for running a report the question doesn't mention that hence d is also wrong b is our final answer we'll lock this answer now let's look at question number 50 this is the last question for this part we will look at more questions in the next part so this is the question you may pause this video and read it so this is a question about CloudFront. See, the question says CloudFront is already being used. So I've already marked the keywords. The first thing you have to do is understand what is the keyword which will be the key decision making factor for answering this question. So there is a CloudFront for use for distribution. And what is happening is you want to reduce the data transfer cost again more. See CloudFront with, the, uh, with using caching, it is already reducing the uh, cost. But you want to reduce it further. If you want to do it, what are the options? And you cannot do it by modifying the application source code. Okay. And what is the application doing? It is creating and returning single use text files in response to user request. So someone is typing a user request and it sends some uh, single use text files. So these are the options. So in order to you know reduce it further, you have one option that you compress the data, compress the files. See. CloudFront is already caching it. So there is no other option. You cannot milk a bull. Okay, this is the bull. You got a bull. You cannot milk the bull. So what you have to do is you have to reduce the data transfer cost by compressing the files. If you compress the files, less data will be sent across the network and you will save the cost. So A looks correct. But let's also look at other options. 
So option B is talking about using transfer escalation to reduce response times. See, the question is not about reducing response times. The question is about reducing the cost. When you are doing cost reduction, if you use transfer escalation, it will increase your cost by many fold. So B is wrong from a cost perspective. Option C, you are already using CloudFront and most likely when you're using CloudFront, you are using it for caching. So this is a repetition. C is wrong because you are already having this feature at play. See, multi-part upload, option D, multi-part upload will only help you uh, if you are uploading a very huge file. So this is a single user text file, uh, most likely a small file. And by splitting the file, you are not reducing the cost. The size is the same. You are just splitting it. You have to zip it. You have to compress it to reduce the size. And if you send reduced size over the network, you will save the cost. So D is wrong. So this is what will happen. You, the user will send the response and you, the app will send you single user text files so if you use lambda to compress the files it will help you save the cost please subscribe to my channel this brings us to the end of part 8 of this video series see you in the next part